Hey everyone, today I wanted to give you a whole look about the new gallery that I opened back in August 1st, 2020. I wanted to show you how it looks, a little bit about my thought process behind the setup, how I set it up, and just to kind of take you through what my plans a little bit are for the gallery moving forward. So just to give you a little bit background about the gallery space, I've been looking for a space prior to January 2020 for like about a year in different parts of Montreal. And finally, when I found the place in January, I was kind of couldn't believe myself that this was actually happening. And by February, I actually had got the keys. End of January, actually, I had got the keys and I started work on the renovation, you know, painting it, doing all the work that it needed to be done to set it up to my vision. And as you know, by March, mid-March, I kind of stopped the renovation for about until beginning of July when I kind of decided to roll through and finish off everything that needed to be done to get it to where I want and to be open on August 1st. And since then I've been open and it's been challenging to say the least, but you know, these are not normal times we're going through, but I'm still excited about this gallery. My plan is still the same. It haven't really changed. So I just wanted to talk about it. The, the minute I found this place, I actually knew exactly how I wanted it to be set up. I just knew what I wanted to go where and how I wanted it to look. It just made sense, the space. It had really high ceilings, which I really, really liked. It had a really nice front facade to the street, which is actually the same street as I did my first um, gallery showing a few years back. It's actually it's been three back since I did my first exhibition, which is another gallery just like a few steps to my right from where, my, from where I am. So it's really, really excited. I'm glad that I found a space in an area that I really want. But I've looked all over Montreal and I was checking daily. I think it's really essential. If you're looking for a space, to check every day what's new on the market till you find the right space for the right price. And for me, it actually worked out. This is kind of makes this whole thing really surreal because when I found it, I couldn't believe that I finally found a place only to find out like months later, the whole COVID lockdown, that's gonna be a bit more challenging. This is not gonna be a normal year and just gotta be patient with it. So the gallery is actually titled Gallery Sank, as in Gallery 5, translation, it's a French name because we live in, I live in Quebec, so I went with a French name, obviously. And it has a meaning for me to be called Gallery Sank because I'm actually born on May 5, so it's like 5-5, five, five, and I'm the fifth kid in the family, so 5 was my lucky number. So when I wanted a name for the gallery, it was just the obvious choice to go with that, and it has a nice catch to it. So I just went with it. I just needed a name, and I'm happy I picked that name, because it kind of reflects me, but not, in, not directly, not too obviously. So if people ask, what's the story behind the name? Can just give them a bit of background about it. The first thing I'm going to get into is the setup behind me and how I set that up and what my plan is for that setup. Basically this space is really open, there's not much for storage space, so I decided to kind of just design a little bit of a storage, but then I thought about what can I do to make it extra. And as you know, I've been on YouTube for about four years now actually. And I wanted to do a permanent YouTube setup for small videos from the gallery. So this is the setup itself. You can see it's always have the same frame, give or take, you know, maybe a few uh, variations throughout the time. So this is the kind of setup I wanted to do. I wanted to do like, a, I really like the look of reclaimed wood. So I bought some reclaimed wood to kind of build out this whole facade behind me. And I wanted to set it up also as a, as kind of a, like a profile of the artist, have his, my own personal things, like some of my books, you know, speakers for music, a computer for personal stuff to show my website, you know, a typewriter to kind of, kind of design it how I like, you know, and just have also like on the display, display the camera bags that I use. I put a TV up there to have like the YouTube videos playing because that's also part of me. Like this whole section is pretty much like a summarizing of the artist, which is me, but it's also a very usable space for any function. The, the box behind me, I built it out, out of the same wood as well. It acts as a storage for cartons, extra photos that I don't have up on the wall. If I want to swap up pictures, I, that acts as a storage because the space is, I wanted to keep it open. I didn't want to close it down to have extra storage, so I kind of use the space around me to create some storage. So that worked out really, really well. 
So moving forward from this, you know, if you have any specific questions about it, I had some reclaimed wood left, so I kind of built out this table as well, which is like just a metal frame with just the reclaimed wood in the middle to act as a tabletop for review videos. If I'm talking about a product, I can use that. So I definitely like that I like this concept. I've always liked wood and just to kind of have that as well as a choice to really reflect me as a person, reflects my style. So moving on, I'm gonna go over to the counter in the back. I kind of decided to set up a counter in the back to kind of serve coffee from, also sell coffee within the gallery because I wanted to create an experience for the people that come to kind of like, if they come in to look at the pictures, they can, if they choose, they can buy a coffee, take in their time, enjoy the space, you know. And down the line right now is just simply offering a few coffee item menus, you know, the classics like espresso, cappuccino, latte, stuff like that. But it's never gonna be advertised as a coffee shop. It's just like something to offer the people and I kept it very, very minimal when it came to design of the counter. I just went with white tile, with black crowd to keep it very, very simple. And the, I wanted to kind of the whole counter to look like as if it belongs there, like a piece of art as well, as much as like the pictures. So the coffee machine is on display right in a kind of a unique location. It's not very cluttered, it's very symmetrical, it's very, the design is really like simple. And I didn't want it something like heavy, like fill up the counters like most coffee shops do. I wanted to keep it very minimal. So the choice of the white tile with the black route even adds to that minimal. I also have a small shelf on the back that's also tiled in the same style of the counter. It looks like continuous one piece, just extends all the way to the back wall. And that's just to hide some of the plumbing and the wiring running through to the counter. So I use it as a kind of a shelving to display some of my old cameras that I really like that I had at my house, kind of like as a decor element. You know, me, I personally had my start in black and white photography years ago. That's what started this whole photography journey of mine. And to have kind of like a representation of that. So I have my first camera that I actually bought years ago, which was a film camera. And it was a 35 millimeter black and white that I shot with it. So I have that here and I have some other cameras that I had in my house that I like to show on display. And as a graphic, it looks really, really nice as a decor item. And it doesn't take away from it. It's, adds to the photography theme of the place. For me, this is like a dedicated landscape photography gallery in Montreal. I always wanted to be for that. I always wanted to be dedicated for that, always showing my current work and the new work that I shoot. Definitely, this space is never gonna be set up like this and that's it. I'm always gonna have new work being displayed. Whenever I sell a picture, I will replace it with something else just to keep it fresh, keep it exciting. For people that come in, they always have something new. And I also have the idea of that whenever I do new exhibitions, I can do themed exhibitions based on what I'm shooting. If I go to Iceland and do a series of pictures of Iceland, I will take down everything, do a special expo for like a month, simply Iceland stuff all over the gallery. And then hopefully I will sell these. And then when I'm during the normal times, I will just mix what I have from Iceland and what I have pictures from Canada, just to kind of keep it mixed for the normal times and always do events here and there as well to kind of promote the gallery, introduce people to the gallery, maybe do events with live music, you know, drinks and wine, to kind of invite people every now and then to the gallery. Now, the plan was to do these events regardless of when I opened, but now we're going through a lockdown and there's like some restrictions on that. So I'm gonna hold off on the events until a better time, but the plan for the gallery hasn't changed. It's still gonna be part gallery, part workshop space, part the mini coffee shop, part like an event space to use for different exhibitions that I wanna host for new work and things like that. So definitely like my idea for the space is also set right now, but it's also open to the being developed to many aspects. You can't just have one thing and one thing only, it just have to be the combination of everything. So for me, like I'm really, really excited about having one. You know, I can't wait for normal times for it, but it's still a challenge. It's going really well, and I quite like the response that I've been getting. Like everybody that comes into the gallery, you know, they get really inspired by the space. They always have nice things to say. They always seem to love the space. And for me, that's a success because it means I actually 
have something to offer and people really enjoy the visual experience that, that I set up. And for me, it's kind of, I feel like I'm rambling on. <clears throat> but everybody who comes in really enjoy the space. And I wanted to create the space in a way to use the wall space that I have to just be a visual impact of color and pictures. And I feel like I succeeded in that. I want like people to, when they come in, they're just like taking back. And I've had that effect on people. And it just makes me happy to witness that. So I feel like in that terms, I succeeded. And I actually had two sales since I've opened the gallery which is for me is really great. And considering the, these times are not normal, the traffic on the street is not the same. So it requires a bit of patience doing this at this time, but you know what, nevertheless, I'm glad I did it. So I'm just gonna take you a walk around right now. I kind of showed you the setup here with the uh, YouTube setup and the kind of like the profile setup, the whole wall display. This acts like an accent wall as well. And I showed you the counter, how I set it up with our, the way it is. I'm just gonna go over showing you the pictures and how I set it up. And I think like in a gallery, it's really, really important to, more than the pictures on the inside, is to have a nice display to the outside that draws people in. And that could be one photo, one big photo to the outside. So I wanted to have that display in the window frame to the street. So I just kind of built out this floating wall with hang, hanging down by wires. And what I like about it is that it's like 360, you can go around it, it's got a picture on each end. It's also a very nice way to direct the flow of people going in and going out from one end and just kind of explore the space. So for me, it, it's centered perfectly in the window to be visible to the outside and just put like a provocative picture to draw them in and that does the job, you know. For them, they're just, it just draws them in and then they go inside and they see their other photos as well. It also draws, a, draws them in even more. I also have this white piano here, which is, has a funny story. The previous tenant here, he didn't want to move it because it's too heavy moving a piano, so he left it. So I was like, if you don't want it, I'll take it off your hands. So kind of decided to paint it white and just use it as decor to showcase some pictures. And it's funny because I've put a bench in front of it and some people come in who play the piano, sometimes play a little bit of piano and kind of sets the mood for the place and I get a free concert out of it. So I kind of enjoy having that. It's also like another draw. People like wonder like why there's a piano and the pictures on it, it draws to it. And I kind of wanted to think like, it could be like a moment where people can come take a picture on the piano with the pictures behind it and like tag the gallery and it kind of helps promote the gallery in a, in a fun way, like the white piano at the gallery, you know. So that's kind of it. I'm just going to show you the final look of all the pictures on the, on the wall and I'm just going to end it right there, give you a grand tour of the total space. And if you have any questions about setting up a gallery and how, what I went through, just leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer it. As for the gallery space itself, I'm here in Montreal. So if you're around, come by, check it out. It'll be great, you know. Thank you everyone for watching and until next time, cheers.